Achievers, this is kind of like an emergency video slash Easy Achievers gaming discussion slash etc. Uh, I am joined today with one Dan from Podcast PSN. But first off, it's been so long. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. I want to say, first off, how have you been? Been very good. Very good. Uh, Playing lots of games. Now, I don't know. Maybe it's just (laughs) been that long. Your background looks so different. Are you in a different place by chance? No. Is it the the same same place? Oh, my God. Everything looks so different from last I've seen. (laughs) I've seen you. Maybe the the lighting's. You know what? I bet it's the lighting. The the lighting lighting looks a lot better. Yeah. The actually. I actually have more lights off than normal, but mm. I've been doing that lately on the podcast. Yeah, I'm just. I feel like you got like around. almost like a, like an angel glow to you. I like it. I, I mean, I dig it. I got to be honest with you. <laughs> it's my my dual monitors glowing. Mm-hmm. I hate it. I I have the Google Doc open all the time, and it's just this flashbang, constantly on oh, my face yeah. the whole time. Uh, but anyways, what about you see? That? Oh. Oh, whoa. Oh, 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 that's just that's how it looked like. I'll be I'll doing this. I'll open a link. Boom. Complete darkness. Go back. Flashbang. Yeah. <laughs> Audio yeah. listeners are like, what the fuck are you two talking about? Yeah. Uh, Dan, first off, th- again, thank you so much for joining me. But we um, we had a plan. I was originally going to have you on. We we're going to talk about Game Pass. We we're going to talk about uh, a couple things that we constantly talk about on Twitter slash X. Uh, and then. News to me and you, I'm sure, uh, was yesterday. Um, I mean, all hell breaks loose. Uh, we're still in the aftermath of this happening. We really haven't seen much going on. You read the the you've seen the thumbnail. You read the title. You know what's going on. But we're going to be discussing Xbox today. We're going to be discussing uh, multi platforming, Game Pass, etc. Everything about it with the one I think is at least to me uh, someone very knowledgeable about Xbox Game Pass. And just Xbox is a brand in, in you, actually. Uh, so I'm glad that we can make the time today. And first off, I want to just start in the logical place. Um, how did you find out about the news? What was your first reaction? Uh, if you do not know, somehow, you, you know, you haven't heard it yet. Of course, uh, there are ver- rumors from many, uh, many insiders. There isn't really a clear through line, but the obvious is xbox will pl- publish games to other platforms of course being playstation switch and of course that was a new story before being sea of thieves and hi-fi rush but now we're seeing potentially starfield we're seeing potentially the indiana jones game doom game it, it, microsoft flights like so many so dan what's yes. Uh, yeah, I don't remember who I first saw it from, but, uh, obviously the Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves thing was the first thing that I saw on Twitter. Uh, I, I yeah. will never call it X. Fuck you, Elon. I won't either. Oh, I apologize if I can't cuss. Of first. course you can cuss. Of course. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but no, uh, yeah, I saw that pop up and I was like, all right, well, uh, I, obviously we have differing opinions on this, so I'm very interested to yeah. see like the conversation behind that, but uh I, I just at a high level i think it's interesting that we are getting now a barrage of a ton of different games as possibly coming to oh, other gosh. platforms yeah uh i think to me that it signals that they weren't quite ready f- to announce this or or you know talk about this because the rumors were that they were they scheduling an event for the spring to talk about this so this very much feels like to me they were still like positioning like all right what games are going to be exclusive and what games are we going to allow on other platforms like i feel like that was still in the progress of being figured out um and then now it's like we're getting a barrage of everything like oh gears halo everything like I don't know. The truth might be somewhere in between. Yeah, I'm actually kind of with there with you where I because we're getting different news from other people, it almost feels like there will be a middle ground that we kind of meet at because I I kind of have this feeling no one's 100 percent right. We hear Jeff Grubb this morning saying he's hearing gears comes. To, to, to other things. We're hearing Je- Jez saying things uh, from Windows Central. We're, I mean, we're hearing so many, like, 
not necessarily counter, but different information from so many. So I imagine we're going to be at a middle ground somewhere that probably makes a lot more sense to counter or not counter. I'm sorry to um uh, to jump off where you were uh, laying down earlier. I do also kind of feel like that they had this button up, but it I have to you have to imagine only high level people knew this or at least at there the buck had to stop I imagine at high level because why would you be shocked if it leaked because this is huge news so you have to imagine they made this information not knowing it would be leaked i don't know you like i don't know how in this you know like this time you would be surprised at a leak like this but uh rumors are it's it's a it's an employee that is very upset and that they leaked it who knows if that's true we probably will never know uh there's, I mean, the insiders generally have different sources. Sometimes they have the same ones. Generally, they're different. So I imagine it's not just a few people. But I am shocked that if all this is true, or at least 80 to 70 percent true, is uh, someone relatively high had to leak all this. Maybe maybe someone at an executive producing level at some studio or something. I don't know. But this was this is pretty shocking that this goes out. And to have something ready for spring... And then it linking now is pretty, pretty damning because uh, clearly they're on the back foot. They don't really, we got Phil here. Let me, this is a good point to put this uh, Phil on Twitter X, whatever you want to call it uh, today said, quote, we're listening and we hear you. That's a famous Phil line right there. <laughs> We've been planning a business update event for next week where we look forward to sharing more details with you about our vision for the future of Xbox. Stay tuned. All right, I, I remember re I retweeted this. I was like, that is one of the most ominous things you ever could have said about the situation. A, a business update event. I mean, I, I that just sounds so buttoned up. I, not necessarily what you expect from a Phil, but may, you know, maybe maybe he is also upset about this or something. I don't know. But uh, did that seem off to you as well? This, this is the first official communication we got. And for him to kind of sound robotic a little bit seems strange for someone yeah. like Phil. I uh, yeah, I agree with you. I think also uh, what people often forget as well is that Phil is at the end of the day a CEO. Like oh, yeah. Satya Satya put him in the position of being CEO of Microsoft Gaming. So like he's looking to Phil saying like we need profits for Xbox and like yeah. I agree with you this is a very businessy, you know, comment uh for Phil to make but like I feel like he's also handcuffed a little bit because he does have an important role to play with the shareholders being a CEO of mm. Microsoft. And that's not to defend him saying it this way or anything like that. Yeah, I'm yeah, just explaining course. like that's the way I'm taking that is Phil's trying to, uh, you know, lessen the ease to the hardcore, so to speak, that are, you know, throwing flames out there like, oh, my God, everything's on fire. And yeah just try to calm people down but also like he's trying to position it for shareholders for next week yeah and uh, also you know you need to sound like it will be good sort of right because like yeah. it does sound positive right you're sharing more details as if it's like a positive thing so i i do i definitely get where you're coming from with that uh it there's so it's almost i'm almost paralyzed with choice of where we go because there's just so much we could discuss but let's stick with yeah. what we're talking about right now with Xbox potentially going multi-platform. I want to go with how do we find ourselves in this position? I think actually uh, the gift of hindsight is always uh, a welcome one, especially in terms of business. Uh, but it's not something you can look back and really see it until it's happened. I mean, that's what hindsight is. And upon researching for this very conversation, um, I mean, it, seeds were really everywhere uh, where I was looking at, you know, Phil saying, uh, you know, he doesn't like exclusive Phil saying I want Game Pass everywhere. Phil, you know, of course, we have FTC. I, you know, we can go on and on. Uh, how, how do you think we find ourselves where Xbox potentially is looking at their slate of games and going, we have to uh, we have to go multi-platform or X happens? I don't know. You know, fill in the blank with whatever you want to say. Um, I, I see. And I, I them going multi-platform i don't see this being an all or nothing type situation mm, like yeah i think that this is going to be very directed towards specific ips and specific games like you know for instance people were talking about indiana jones and that being a big deal that that it may come to playstation months after xbox 
But to me, that makes a lot of sense because Indiana Jones is a massive IP. That yeah. that thing will sell just having having Indiana Jones on the box. Uh, it's kind of a similar situation in my eyes to Marvel Spider Man. That game sold gangbusters on play, PlayStation. But if that came to Xbox, I think that they would make even more gang- gangbusters. And I don't think it necessarily takes away from their value proposition of their other exclusive games that uh, Sony has on that platform. So like those big properties like that, I don't think that it's insane to say like that those should go to other platforms. But then also you have these little guys like Hi-Fi Rush or even Sea of Thieves, which is tech- technically a triple A game. Uh, yeah. It's more of like a smaller, you know, scale. Audience, it almost felt so. like an indie game when it came out, exactly. which is weird to say, but yeah. it did kind of yeah. when it came out. I was like, this kind of feels like a like a yeah. ragtag group of like 50 people made or something. Like that. But it like, you know, but obviously that wasn't the case. Right. And that's those are the kind of games that I'm picturing that they're going to gear towards. I, I yeah, I don't lend myself to think that they're going to put Gears or Halo or, uh, you know, their big IPs that people look to Xbox for or Fable. Uh, I, I, I personally, I just don't see that happening yet. I There could be a, lo- a future in which that does happen eventually but I don't think that that's what this is indicating personally, even though Jeff Grubb did say they were talking about yours personally. I, I don't and that's, see that. Happening. Uh, and really to, to jump on that quickly on the Jeff Grubb thing, um, that is such a vague thing to say that they're talking. Right. I mean, a- Xbox yeah. talked about bringing a halo to PlayStation for a very long time. I mean, there was a, a, a PS4 port for master chief collection, like, years ago um so i mean they talk about these things all the time will they execute it i i, I remember an ign story i don't remember who from um uh, i think it's pr- I mean, pretty well known they had halo on the ds like they've done weird stuff like that uh for a very long time and you have to imagine maybe we've gotten to a point where they are they were ready to go multi-platform with game pass and there is not a solution that they can find where that happens so they go with the next best step with getting games on your rival platforms, rival in quotes, because who knows if they even see them as rivals at this point. Uh, but you get them generating income to then fill your own ambitions. You could see that. Um, there are many rumors on why this is happening. I saw, I think it was Jez uh, Gordon from Windows Central saying a couple things, um, a couple highlights here. So we'll say Xbox has no plans to quit hardware. Sadia said at the quarterly earnings call that console users are record high. Uh, that's not, eh, you know, I'll say something in a second. Uh, heard some games are going multi-platform response in part to Steam Deck having both PlayStation and Xbox exclusives and Steam Deck 2 being more powerful. And then he he goes on and on. Uh, there are a couple things I think we can bring up with that as well with um, past revenue for Game Pass, not necessarily probably meeting their mark. If we remember the FTC leak, we can see um they had a giant i mean i want i want to say it was a 50 million subscriber base by what was that 2035 i don't know if you remember that that specific uh revenue app but uh i mean c- crazy ambitious and c- clearly that probably did not hit the mark or at least projectedly was not hitting mark so maybe they go on the back foot and like well let's get our titles out there and see if we can recoup costs there are rumors that execs are looking at the 70 billion purchase of Activision and are saying, well, we need a return to start offsetting this giant cost that we just spent. So maybe that is to then say, look, Xbox is still doing well because we can now move to other platforms. People bringing up Sati Nadella saying multiple times that he doesn't understand why this is even a thing, that why aren't all of our stuff is everywhere. Of course, that makes sense. Being a Microsoft CEO, of course, you would think that. Um I think I, I I hold more weight to that than really Phil saying that because Phil, of course, wants to make the most money and that would make the most sense of getting your stuff out there as well. I'm curious if Phil even supports this. I imagine he does just with the random comments we've gotten over the years of him saying, you know, I want Game Pass on Switch, you know, and, and just little offhanded comments. He said like scattered and random little interviews he've said. So where do you go from the success of this multi-platform strategy, do you think this is a future where if they follow this path, does Microsoft change drastically in the next 10 years? Now, I want to be clear, 
uh, for, of course, everyone at home and for you, Dan, that um, I think for the short term, nothing changes. Uh, I think from the next heat, one starting from right now, five to eight years, we probably don't notice too, too much. We probably still get an Xbox Series Pro, whatever you want to call that thing. Uh, we'll probably get, you know, other, we'll probably get one more console after this. And then after that, I think it's a question mark. Maybe that next console is even a question mark if I really think about it. I'm not really sure. But what do you think long-term this plan going forward? And again, nothing really confirmed. But if they were to go multi-platform, which I imagine they are at some point or at least at some level doing this because there's just too much information saying it is. Uh, what do you see in a 10-year? What is Xbox in 10 years then? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's definitely an interesting conversation because I, I do think that the game industry as a whole in 10 years is going to look very different. Like, I, I don't even think that, you know, just Xbox, I think everyone is going to uh, change and position themselves to leverage cloud and all of that stuff. And like, the question is, is, is cloud going to be in a good enough state at that point for people to be invested in that instead of hardware? I don't think it will be in 10 years, but like, those are questions that we would have to answer to see if like, I think that, that that's Phil's ultimate goal. I feel like, or Microsoft's ultimate goal yeah. is not needing hardware and just being able to deliver it that way. But the, the experience has to be great and how you're delivering it at that point. And right now the cloud is not a good offering for hardcore gamers. So uh, hopefully that doesn't happen anytime soon, but uh, does it change Xbox in 10 years? <sighs> I don't know. I, I don't, I don't feel like it does because like you look at Microsoft as a whole, as a, a conglomeration, they have a ton of hardware uh, divisions that don't make a lot of money. For instance, the surface division, they don't make much money. They, they make a lot of uh, revenue, but not profit from that. So like what, at the end of the day, what, what is the, I guess detracting factor for Microsoft releasing a new console every seven years or eight years, whatever it is, uh, because they're releasing surfaces every year that don't really make money because the only thing they care about is the software and services side of things. So they sell the hardware to help get the software and services. Um, but then, you know, if they go on PlayStation or switch as well, they can sell software and services there. So like, I don't know. I, I think the most important thing is, is what does this do to the competition if they do eliminate themselves from the hardware space? I think that yeah. is probably the most worrying thing, right? If we do see um, almost like a a disappearing factor to what we would call an Xbox right now, you imagine that would give a PlayStation a Switch free reign to just really do whatever they want. Uh, because at that point, we have what? We have PlayStation really only in the console marketplace, which people kind of have theorized for a long time that maybe we would go the way of like a DVD or something and there really would be like a one device at some point and we, they, they just make games. I remember that being like a, you know, like a thought uh, experiment like years ago now, like decade or 15 years, because it was kind of it is kind of weird if you think about it, like, uh, you know, like there's a whole entertainment and like you're all competing for like dominance with your own box with also making your own. It's like it's like if like Paramount made up DVD player and then only could only play <laughs> Paramount movie. You know, it's weird when you think about it that way. But uh, maybe that is a future we can see now. I'm not really sure. I hope not. I as an Xbox fan, I mean, if you listen to the show or see my Twitter, I mean, I talk about it all the time. I love Xbox, but. Uh, to see a future going to cloud and something that actually intensely worries me with what we saw uh, or sorry, what we're seeing with these rumors. Uh, I'm incredibly worried. I do see a lot of people saying like, this is great for gamers, which I agree. Uh, is it great for the Xbox gamer? I would say maybe not. We don't know. I think that is the biggest question mark to all this. Is this great for a consumer base? A hundred thousand percent. Yes. I will never argue that. Uh, it would probably be best for consumers if, like I said, these never existed in the first place and there was just one box to rule them all, Lord of the Rings style, right? But that's not really what we're discussing right now, right? We're talking about a platform that people like, uh, not many people comparatively, but a lot of people do like. And there is now a, I think, a substantial worry and a rightful worry that 
that box could go away. And we could be in a future where they're like, buy this $100 stick and stream it. And I'm like, no, no. It needs to be like literally seamless for me to ever care about that. And then now I'm now have lost my entire digital library, regardless if it's still there, who cares? Because I don't want to play on it. And I've lost my achievements, my gaming history, et cetera, et cetera. So that is why I'm worried. And that is actually uh, what I wanted to talk about to you today. That and of course, we're going into Game Pass, going into so many avenues. What brought Microsoft to this spot that is so intriguing that brought this discussion on. So and again, thank you for this. This is already intriguing so so far. Um, going with what we have to think about from 10 years for Microsoft again, being such that big question mark, I do feel really do kind of feel that deep sense of what you said with Microsoft being that subscription service company. That is kind of beautifully said with, of course, Office 365 is like a big driving thing for them. And there's so many other things. And I think the uh, Surface tablets are a perfect kind of analogy here almost where you would imagine Xbox wouldn't want to stop making these things. One, because I imagine when they're doing R and D and all these things, it is probably beneficial for other avenues of Xbox. You always hear these things or sorry, of other avenues of Microsoft. You always hear these things where, you know, R and D helped to make this other product better and et cetera, et cetera, going all the way back to the original Xbox where, um, uh, just it turning on so fast was one of the main drivers of what made the, the original Xbox be this kind of big machine that, uh, he was like, uh, I remember at the time, um, why am I blanking on his name? Head of Microsoft at the time. Peter Moore? Biggest billionaire. Or... No, not uh, important. Oh, um, head of Microsoft. Uh, yeah. Steve Ballmer? They, Bill yeah, Gates. yeah, Bill Gates. Thank you. Um, okay. Can't believe I blanked on Bill Gates' name. <laughs> uh, the, the, the original Xbox turning on so fast and him jumping up and being like, why don't our computers, computers start that fast? And then that probably driving more and more. So I imagine, one, to save face because it would be kind of embarrassing Frankly, if the biggest company in human history decided to like, like got beat, like that would probably be interesting. So you probably just want to do that. Just one to stay facing two. R and D is very important to the overall process of your company. And you get to keep that and it's information that you keep putting in and, and it churning out into other avenues. So hopefully that's the case, but who knows? Moving on to, I want to discuss game pass for a little bit. Cause this could really be, the reason we might be here, we go all the way back to 2016. Is that when Game Pass launched? Oh, do you remember? Uh, 16 I'm or seven. Yeah, 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 I'm close around, to that. Man. And then yeah. around six months later, they announced day and date for Game Pass, if I remember right. This should, this should be close. Um, going all the way back to then, now seeing where we are now, I guess Game Pass makes more sense as a avenue of diverging from it or potentially diverging from a console market place to something that kind of spiders out into multiple things. Like you are saying with these services, do you, do you think game pass hurt more or has potentially saved Xbox to even exist at this point now? Uh, I mean, that's, that, that's another difficult question. Like it is because I feel like Game Pass has been received very well by consumers. Um, has it been successful for Microsoft as a company? I don't think it's there to where th it's not to the point to where they're happy with it quite yet uh, because the, the subscriber numbers, in my opinion, are not possible in the current uh, climate of what Xbox consoles are selling. Like yeah. you can only have Game Pass right now on well, that's not true. You can have it on PC, but you can have it on PC or uh, the actual Xbox console, and you're limiting yourself because the Series S and X are not selling that well compared to the PS5. You know, half, they have half the amount of sales. So, like, I think the biggest problem with Game Pass is that they don't have a big enough install base to get the numbers that they need to make it sustainable or make it you know worthwhile i guess is more so the words uh because at the end of the day microsoft as a company only cares about one thing and that's profits like yeah. if they're not making a bunch of money then they're not happy uh as a as a whole um but yeah i, I it's diff it's really difficult because like you know the small there's a lot of small developers that have talked about how game pass has helped them 
uh, because it's, you know, given access to their game that someone may not have even checked out before and uh, checked it out with Game Pass and maybe bought it after the fact or, you know, just played it through Game Pass. But it gets more eyeballs and more attention on it. I think it's beautiful you said um, specifically with so many aspects, right? I think it was out. I think it, when I think of Game Pass, I, I do think it was a beautifully run service for these smaller developers, for your ID at Xboxes, for your, you know, insert insert smaller dev here, right? It never really made sense for bigger AAA titles, especially when we knew how much it made, right? Let's bring up the FTC numbers uh, that were leaked. So as of... um. Let's see here. What do I have here? There it is. So in all of 2022, right, Game Pass on consoles specifically brought in 2.9 billion in revenue. Let's not forget that, right? Dan already brought that up. Revenue is important, but uh, at the end of the day, your shareholders care about one P word, and that's profit. They only care about profit, right? So we only know revenue. We don't know how much it actually made. Uh, and then in consoles, that means a monthly revenue. So if you break that down, of course, divided by 12, it means a monthly revenue of 241 and 600,000, uh, sorry, uh, $241 million, which if you then compare it to Sarah Bond's email estimating various games for the service, right? Uh, there's an estimate that Dying Light 2 would cost them $50 million to get on the service. Uh, there's an estimate uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 would get them $5 million. This is an email from 2022 as well. Uh, something like a, um, a Gotham Knights would be $50 million, and Assassin's Creed Mirage would be $100 million. Suicide Squad be 250 million right we're talking about you're talking about your entirety revenue almost in a single month for a big game like that right so uh you have to imagine that they quickly realized we can't get big games right they they kind of almost tried you saw a few games like an outriders you imagine that didn't cost that much because square was kind of throwing that out to to, to just kind of release it and they pretended like it wasn't a live service game anymore and they're like yeah no it's really single player we promise it wasn't going to be a live service at any point uh but you see this you compare the numbers and it doesn't really make sense with with one you're we're talking about how much money it's making of course we can then bring in gold and all these things and now it's all one thing now anyways but to think about it from this specific point of view right it it kind of falls apart once you kind of put all the numbers together and then you think about how much money it must cost for all these first party games to then be managed and then of course this does eat away at some console or sorry some um physical game sales because people are going to be sitting on the game pass subscription etc cetera, etc cetera, right we can go on and on so i almost i am grateful for i am still grateful for game pass one as a consumer because it's amazing i mean are you kidding me but when you see it when the numbers are all written out here and it hasn't really gotten a, uh, a, like a really good price increase. Um, and I imagine they don't want to increase the price because you imagine we would have seen it by now. We saw the small price increase of, was two it? Dollars, um, yeah, it was two bucks, right? So, I mean, that is a lot of money when you compare it to millions of people. But at the end of the day, for them, that's probably nothing. Uh, so we've, we've only really saw one price increase the entirety of this thing's life. Uh, but I think Netflix has doubled since that same time or something like that. Uh, nearly doubled, at least. And w w once we compare all these numbers, and uh, it does kind of make you think like, whoa, maybe they were, I wonder if they regret it. I doubt they do, because I, I frankly think Game Press probably saved Xbox as a platform. It probably did. I think the Series S also did as well. Um, I don't know what made them think to launch two systems, but that was probably brilliant, whoever figured that out. Uh, because if you imagine uh, the that install base not being there to fuel this generation, it they probably would this would be of a way worse situation, right? There's theories that I think uh, seventy percent of Xboxes are Series S's, something that's similar to that market share of that. I think it's six, six, sixty to seventy, something like that. Um, so it's like vastly overselling it. And then if you take the series as, as a whole, I, I, I can't remember. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Dan, but I believe the series consoles are also behind the Xbox One consoles, which is like that doesn't even make sense to me. Um, but that is a true fact. I think it's bad behind two, two million units in the same life cycle, which is, I imagine, part of the worry as well. You're sitting as an exec, you're hearing these numbers and you're like, wait, so we're behind. We're not we're and and now we got this 70 million overhead on this new thing. So okay, well, 
let's figure some stuff out. And maybe that brings them to, all right, well, uh, release the, <laughs> release the hatches. Like we're, we're getting everything out there to, to go almost all around. Uh, I do kind of agree with you where you're saying, um, games not seen as core Xbox will probably launch everywhere. I think if I was over there, if I was Phil, I would probably be on my hands and knees and be like, we cannot let Halo and Gears and core Xbox games go. We just can't. It doesn't make any sense if we do that. We want to let go Elder Scrolls. We want to let go um, your Blade. You know, these other games were made by Bethesda's and these things. I think that makes perfect sense if you need the revenue, you need the return on your investment into the... You, I mean, they just put $70 billion in this thing, right? So they need the money back, right? I kind of get it, but uh, I would be quite literally on my hands and knees with Sadia being like, bro, we cannot. We can't let people look at this and be like, if if someone walks into a store and has the ability to buy one console, it being a no-brainer to buy a PlayStation. That just cannot happen, because then you just lose the entire reason to, one, make the service in the first place, Game Pass, right? And I'll get into my initial theory about Game Pass and I'll be interested to see if you think um, uh, if you agree with what I originally thought it would be. Clearly, that isn't anymore. Um, but what did you think about everything I said there? What do you what do you yeah, think? I, Where do you want to go with that? I think it's interesting. Um, I think uh, there's a lot to unpack there. But yeah, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of Game Pass, like I think it's very interesting because I feel like halo and gears and all these games i think would be awesome actually if they came to other platforms but i and i want to be clear in that like i think it would be really cool because more people are experiencing things that i love like halo i fucking wish every more people were you know digging halo and halo infinite's just come off one of the best years it's had uh ever uh or halo in general yeah. uh and like seeing that go to more people would be awesome but at the same time yes i agree with you that if we get to the point where halo and gears and the big ips are going to other platforms it does take away from the fact that you have your own platform people are are going to go to other platforms and just buy a playstation because it has all the games or pc for instance that has yeah pretty much all the games um but again i kind of go back to the whole thing of all for a long time now microsoft doesn't care about console sales and that's why that's true a lot of people say that they don't report console sales anymore because they're in second place or whatever or third place i guess uh which maybe there's part that's part of it but i think more so they just don't care if people buy consoles they don't that's not their focus because console sales don't make them money consoles have the lowest margins of any you know industry out there or you know rivaling any any industry out there their money is made back in software and services so i think it's not wild for me to imagine them allowing all of their games on other platforms but i don't see it happening in the next 10 years, for instance, uh, I could see a world in which Halo eventually comes to PlayStation. But if that were to happen, then I think it would be to the point where Microsoft is getting out of the hardware space. Yeah. And I don't see them getting out of the hardware space right now. I would have to agree if, if we do see the the game i mean that is the game we don't let's be honest as as an xbox movie, we don't have many right we we have a few but we don't have that many games really to spare right so i really don't want to see that many games go over there like let's let's be real I, i'm fine with your bethesda your dooms you know i never really cared if that was exclusive and it kind of feels i mean to me honestly it does kind of feel a little gross that you buy these games and then you're like well they're all, now they're only on my platform so you know i was always fine with that i never cared active I, I was like Nah, unless they use this as a ransom to have Game Pass on PlayStation, this this will never be exclusive to Xbox. Guaranteed Call of Duty specifically, and then you know maybe Diablo or something like that. There's other games that you could probably put in there, uh, but I always thought that that would save. So I'm fine with that. But again, yeah, piggyback on that, 
I don't think you should let go of Halo. I mean, that literally is the one thing you have that makes people be like, oh, yeah, that's an Xbox. Like, that's the Xbox game. And if you lose you, that, like, what else do we have? <laughs> like, what else do we got? <laughs> and, you know, the other thing that I was thinking, like, that has affected this whole conversation as well is, like, Microsoft clearly hasn't been doing well since the Xbox One disaster of a, yes. a launch in 2013. And Famous. the interesting thing, Yes. And the interesting thing to me is since that moment and since Phil took over, Microsoft has had largely the best policies and consumer friendly decisions of any of the three companies. Like all three of them have had problems in that time span. I'm not sitting here saying that Microsoft's not had any problems during that time span. They we're going to make Xbox Live Gold $120, double it. And then they're like, oh, never mind. We're just kidding. Just uh, kidding. Why even release yeah. that? If it, well, Right. I never understand yeah. these things. Why would you, if you're going to backtrack, yeah. this is famous, Microsoft. Announce yeah. it and backtrack. If you are really to the point where you're backtracking, it's not a good idea then. If, right. Like if there's a, if there's a, if there's an avenue of escape in this plan, then it's probably yeah. not a good plan. Like you got to like put your shoulder into and, it. And that's the interesting part that I find because I still and you know, people label other people as fanboys for saying what I'm about to say. I'm not a fanboy. I enjoy all the consoles. However, I think that since this moment has started from 2013, I think there has been a bias towards Xbox and the media mm. in general okay. because there's been so many policies and and uh, consumer friendly decisions that Xbox has made that I feel like they haven't gotten the credit for. And Game Pass is one of those. Mm. And, you know, PlayStation, we see so many times, time, time and time again, that Jim Ryan makes these fucking absurd policies <laughs> yeah. that I'm just sitting here like. If this man controlled the world, we'd all be dead. Like this <laughs> is a disaster. Like, uh. And maybe that gets better after Jim's gone. Sorry, Jim. We'll miss you, Jim. Get out. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I just find it fascinating. And like, you know, thinking back to Rise of the Tomb Raider, I always go back to this because okay. Rise of the Tomb Raider got a ton of criticism. It did. My opinion is warranted. I agree. It should be criticized that it came exclusive to Xbox One for a one year time window that they weren't straight up about initially. But also like we're not holding the other companies to the same standard because we have Sony who is the, you know, the the brainchild of this nowadays. Oh yeah. That they they pay for all kinds of third party exclusives. Final Fantasy 16 being the most recent of them. Like Final Fantasy 15 was on all platforms. Then 16 only on PlayStation. I just, I feel like we're not giving an even look at that. And like that warps. And there's a reason why I brought all that up. That warps the consumer mindset of PlayStation is the best place to play. And that's why it continues to dominate and continues to get, grow in dominance, in my opinion. And I, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy in saying that, but I just feel like we've been on that trend the last 10 plus years at this point. And again, not saying Microsoft hasn't made poor decisions and had bad things happen and not release fucking games. You know, that's a oh. problem. But I was yeah, that was the main I, one saying that I, 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 yeah. like, I feel like I feel like we we the fog was in our eyes for like every right. year. It was man. Next year is about to pop off. And then you say it again the next year, and then the next year, right. and then we get it, you know, and then Redfall came out. Uh, yeah. I want to uh, go back on that. I, I, you know, I don't necessarily blame your observation there because it I, that is something I did forget about. Uh, it's just to bring people back a little bit in time. Yeah, Rise of the Tomb Raider, although they were shrewd about it for that first week because clearly they signed some agreement that they couldn't say it in a time frame. I don't know why they would, but... Right. Uh, they were very weird about it. Um, they couldn't have just said Xbox and just say only on Xbox for right now or something, you know, something to that effect. Uh, that's very strange. But yeah, that is a policy that I don't really see many people uh, say about PlayStation. It is very annoying when I see a clear uh, market grab from PlayStation to just 
keep a game from the other thing. And, you know, it is smart. It's, it's business wise. Um, Phil right. went on record saying like he doesn't get that. And that's why he doesn't go after those specific things. Um, I understand. I understand what he's coming from. But like, I don't know. It's like fighting fire with ice cubes. It's, it's, I'm like, eh, it doesn't really make sense. But I, I, I get it. But no, you, you do kind of have to combat that in some way. Maybe Game Pass was that. Uh, but yeah, it, it's Sony for a while there was kind of rapid. I feel like we've slowed down a tiny bit. It's really only like very big games right now, at least in the recent memory. But yeah, it was pretty rampant where it felt like Xbox was like, <laughs> like purposely left out a lot. And I know that uh, it, specifically in Japan, of course, that's a huge right. reason because, you know, obviously it doesn't so well there uh, to to backtrack a little bit. What you said, let's let's. um. Hmm. Let's discuss. You said there were some good things that Xbox has done. We've been pretty negative, I think, so far. So let's talk about it. What do you think are some good things that have been overlooked in the last few years? We'll take a break. Let's be a little positive here, and then we'll move back on. Yeah, I mean, Game Pass is a massive one, obviously, yeah. because like the value you're getting from Game Pass is absolutely insane. Like, and there's been consumer friendly things that people, you know, take for granted, like the. Um, the uh, uh, what's it called? The customized program where you can customize controllers to mm -hmm. however you like them, the colors, designs. Uh, you can now do that with consoles as well. Like, you know, face plates. Uh, that's that's a great yeah. example that we used to have face plates back in the day for Xbox 360, and Microsoft looked at Series uh, X and they're like, how can we make a, a custom thing to go on this? So they made the uh, console covers and, you know, you just put it around the console. Yeah, you very don't have well made. To buy, yeah. Yes. And you don't have to buy a, a $500 custom console like, mm. you know, Spider-Man custom console. Or, yeah. And, you know, that I fucking have a major problem with Sony with because they announced the the plates for PS5 for the Spider-Man version. So you they could just buy the them. plates. They yeah they, they, sold, like, they sold clearly three of them it was I was like obvious as the day is yeah. long they made yeah ten thousand probably maybe less than that yeah. and it would gone the, gone like that <laughs> and the consoles were freaking available for a long time like long the custom time. PS5 yep. Spider Man console that made me so mad because I wanted the plates but I'm not gonna pay almost six hundred dollars for a custom console when I already have one like. Mm. But sorry, we're, I didn't mean to take us. No, you're good. For you're good. But like, we're here. yeah, it's like stuff like that, that, that uh, it just gets overlooked that I feel like, you know, and part of it, yes, is Microsoft being wishy-washy. They'll make a decision and then they'll pull back the decision or, you know, do these weird things. But also part of it, like I said, I just feel like, you know, Sony continues the moat. Uh, momentum that they built from the PS4 generation and it continues to keep going in media and in the consumer space and like Microsoft sitting back looking at this like man we fucking we put out some really good policies and we are trying to make this a really good place to play and Phil's finally coming through with the games uh, aspect of it yeah, with, finally. You know, we have a bunch Yes, yeah, we have a I bunch agree. of good games coming this mm -hmm. year and, and beyond. And they're sitting back looking at this like, we're still distant sec second place to Sony, uh, third place if you include Nintendo. And like, uh, if they're looking at that, if Microsoft as a whole is looking at that, they're, then why, why focus on this thing that isn't really performing? We're going to focus on something else like software and subscription that may make us more money. And again, I don't think that that necessarily means they're going to pull out of the hardware space. I just think that they're putting their focus somewhere else, uh, mm -hmm. so to speak. I think you said a lot of good things there. I, I do agree. I think it per, uh, probably is just sheer dominance on PlayStation side that we probably just don't really feel the pushback that much. Uh, just, okay. I think it's just because it's just so, so dominant. I think that there's recent numbers that it's probably being sold High, a little higher than two to one could be even as much as three to one like we really don't know uh, this is like a little guess to that i mean that's madness like if you really think about it and I, that's probably some of the reason why it does kind of feel like a few things are overlooked or it does feel like it one is strongly looked at o over the other and it does kind of feel a little lopsided sometimes i think sometimes you know we look at playstation uh 
more negatively than needed and sometimes i think xbox i think it does kind of sway in but it does kind of feel that xbox does kind of get the heavy hand more so than that probably because most people probably don't care about it uh i i've i hear you know i hear many people on my uh, uh twitter like homepage, whatever you call it um most of them i know for a fact aren't xbox fans and play you know usually play like what's the cool thing and then you know that's playstation right now and that's just kind of how it is right now and Maybe that'll be the future going forward. Who knows? But to to veer back into what we're discussing further, um, let's bring it back to talking about what kind of future we think. You know what? I actually want to want to theorize something with you. And this kind of I'm curious if if you think this was ever in the plans. But the way I envisioned Game Pass when I was really kind of getting into this um line of work, podcasting, whatever you want to say. I originally thought Game Pass was going to be kind of used as this true thing that eventually they could bring these things that they're buying to other platforms. So I originally thought, you know, oh, we'll sign the Call of Duty 10-year deal. Yeah, we'll sign that. Guess what happens in 10 years, though? It's gone, but Game Pass can be on your PlayStation, and that's just fine with us. I thought that's what was going to happen. I thought... Uh, they were kind of going to be very, very shrewd, kind of businessy, and be like, you know, we're going to buy all these studios and force Nintendo and Sony to come to us to for these things. Hey, we want your subscription service on this. Or, hey, we, <laughs> if you look at the PlayStation Store cuts of Call of Duty, they make a lot of money for doing nothing. They might sign some marketing deals and et cetera, et cetera, but large part they do nothing for call of duty but they make i think 300 million dollars something like that off that cut for all those sales something like that i think was one year amazing amount that's a that's a god of war that's a i mean that's a lot of profit and we see that and there's a a universe that that could be taken away i felt like that was kind of the plan like hey you come to us you know i'll get you we'll get you we'll give you your call of duty we'll give you diablo we'll give you wow you know insert blizzard insert bethesda game we'll give you your elder scrolls just say game pass what do you think about that was that ever in the cards you think or maybe that maybe that isn't how the vision the problem with that is is you're continuing the narrative that xbox is continuing continuing to make bad decisions for the consumer because if Sony says, if Sony balks at that and says, no, we don't need Call of Duty, we don't need Diablo, we don't need all of that, behind the scenes, mind you, not public yeah, facing, yeah, yeah. then public facing, Microsoft's going to get all the criticism for why is X, why is Call of Duty not on PlayStation? Why is Diablo not on PlayStation? It continues that negative cycle of uh, why is Microsoft doing this when maybe behind the scenes it wasn't necessarily happening that way? It was more so Sony saying, "Well, we're gonna we're gonna take you, or we're gonna make you balk at your words," and you know, yeah, I don't know, yeah, I, I yeah, I feel like that would have sent things in a worse direction because it would have put more negative attention on Xbox. Yeah, you you could argue that they would probably become somewhat of a negative thing and maybe if they do something like that that could be used against them in some way later on if they try to buy something who knows but and uh you know that is kind of a gray area probably in like terms of like business legality who knows uh and it it, it does kind of make you look like a literal monopoly if you try to do stuff like that like we're gonna buy everything out yeah. and that i mean that's kind of you know if we look at the ftc things that's kind of what they were saying anyways but maybe again right sh- plans changed or something maybe they didn't have the revenue for any of this i'm not really sure again we look at all these numbers and these things maybe they were bleeding money or maybe they maybe just game pass was not working hardware wasn't selling and then they looked at it was like look we have to release these games on other platforms this will give us over the next hump and then maybe question mark maybe in the next generation we stop or maybe we keep doing this or maybe by that point they hope game pass it i don't know you just i feel like the end goal clearly was Game Pass on everything, um, but that does. But if you release your games on everything, then doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose? And maybe it doesn't because at some point, maybe Game Pass does come to something, and you could say, "Look, you can still buy it, but 
our subscriber server, you know, just just pay just pay the money, ten bucks, you know, twelve bucks, whatever it will be at that mm-hmm. time, fifteen. Get it for and the FT. The FTC argument that you're bringing up is a, is a great argument to add as well because uh, Phil's also been on record saying he he thinks that they're going to continue to have more acquisitions after the Activision Which acquisition. Is fucking so, crazy. I, I mean, I I'd yeah. start to cut you off. That is wild no, to good. read. To to yeah. like to like yeah, and and we're also thinking about getting more. I'm like, you're getting fucking more, dude. Yeah. Stop, stop and it. That's, <laughs> And that's the thing, like, if they are wanting more, the best way to position yourself in that is by offering more of your games to other platforms because yeah. the FTC will look at that and say, okay, they're sharing more games than what previously would have been traditionally. So, yeah, it, and yes, I don't love that one corporation's owning all this stuff, but that's just the reality of yes, bi- yeah. business. So that's just I, I, I'm always on record saying this sucks, this suck, but you know it's ha- yeah. it's happening, so it doesn't matter if I don't right. like it or not. Yeah, they're they're a three trillion dollar company now. They literally it's could ridiculous. buy whatever they want. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous! See the mar- like record profits on all these things. Yeah. Like you saw their their share prices. I mean, damn. Like and they're exploding. And that's another point of as well as like the, Microsoft looks at Sony, Sony, a hundred billion dollar company. They it's just not on. They don't look at them as a major competitor because they they're a drop in the bucket compared to them. Oh, yeah. They piss that <laughs> like they right. like, yeah. like not to be sh- like crude here, but they right. they literally <laughs> piss money that way. like they yeah. made back their Activision deal already like yeah. isn't that weird like yeah. like that's incomprehensible it, let's not forget the uh bethesda deal was made back in that quarter in yeah. that quarter like that is the we're talking about money that like it's hard to fathom like like you know it's hard to even think of how much this company is worth yeah it, it's insane it's yeah I was originally going to bring up this Tim Stewart comment, but I, I've, I've brought it up many times. You remember it, yes. Uh, Wells Fargo Summit. He discusses that, you know, this pretty much, I mean, I was right. I got, I'm sorry to be the, that guy, but I was 100% all over this comment and being like, he is telling us the future of X- Xbox here, and lo and fucking behold, here we are. Now, I guess I'll remind everyone just in case uh, you don't remember. So this was at a Wells Fargo Summit. Uh, my God, when was this? Was this October? or something somewhere around there late last year. Uh, this is also the reason um, the headlines went around. I don't know if this upset you. It's incredibly upset me when Phil Spencer came out. I was like, there is no plans for game pass on PlayStation. When he had that window central interview. Mm. Did you remember that? Yeah. And then there was no follow up. Right. Did that piss you off? Like I did. Like, I'm sorry. Like I don't, I like jazz. He seems like a nice yeah. guy or whatever, but this is like no I feel like we have yeah. a games journalism problem. I bring that up. How do you not ask a question after that? You just right. yeah okay all right. There, he said there's no <laughs> plans. There, there's no other question I think I should ask after. And there are no pl- like I'm oh, I get so fucking mad. I'm sorry. I get I get <laughs> answed up when I talk about this. But like we have such an issue with journalism in this mm. industry. <laughs> when you see that, you're like. It was on a silver platter, my man. And yeah, the, and then I, I don't blame people for getting upset and be like, well, they're afraid of losing access. And I don't think that's the case. But I find it harder and harder to fend when I see stuff like that. Where I'm like, well, you didn't think and- of asking a follow up on that, man? Like, that's just, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm i getting answered. No, what you're... do you think? No, I, on the back of your comment about game journalism, you're absolutely right. Like, we we live in a world now that everyone is more concerned about SEO than giving correct or accurate information. Like, you know, we had this conversation a few weeks ago on, on podcast PXN about, uh, I'm sorry, what is, what is that? Where where can I find that? (laughs) Yeah. Every Wednesday at 8 PM. Okay. okay. But in YouTube, uh, but no, we had, uh, conversations about that because, um, we were, we were discussing how, 
certain outlets. I'm not going to call any out here because I don't want to put you Dude, in a Hey, you do you, bro. I don't give a fuck. I, <laughs> None of them are going to hire me anyways. <laughs> certain outlets, I see them post uh, these headlines or whatever on, on Twitter or X or whatever, and they are completely, like, in the headline is completely different than what the actual article says. So, oh, yeah. Like, the actual article has oh, yeah. accurate... Fucking... Kotaku. I'll bring I'll yeah, bring him well, up. Yeah, Kotaku is one of the main drivers of this. They yeah. they have good content there, but they are largely irrelevant. It with yeah. their headline structure, they're clearly rage bait, and right. we've degraded to this sad state with a lot of these. Pub. Um, did you see the IGN? Kevin Con like come on, yeah. You, you're like utilizing awful. this dead man to like that get was clicks. That was the one that we just were discussing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that, that is yeah. that's classless. Like that's not that's yeah. like above bad journalism. That is like straight up classless. I get the yeah. general idea what they're trying to get across, but like you're supposed to be a news site, dude. Like you can't say shit like that. How do you yeah. expect to be taken seriously when you're? I mean, that's using a dead man to like prop yeah. up your little headline. That's fucked. That's fucked. And and one of the Rocksteady developers, former developers, they don't work there anymore, uh, commented on that too, retweeted, uh, quote tweeted it and said like, you guys don't know what Kevin said. Kevin was very excited about this project. That's and a good point. Told us like IGN or whoever is reporting these things as though they have a personal relationship with this person. Obviously they don't because he's dead. Yeah, and he's fucking, yeah that's, I mean... Yeah, that's poor taste very much. Of course, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, what a beautiful thing to bring up. I love, oh my God, I love talk clowns. Yeah, someone will eventually prove us wrong, right? We'll eventually get more than one that we have right now. Like we have Duration Schreier. Uh, I think yeah. um, Rebecca Valentine's doing good stuff. You know, we have good people, but largely. Jason, Jason who has me blocked on. Of Twitter course he because... does. He he hits that he, block button. He does. It's indiscriminately. It's everywhere. Like. I, and I'm not I'm not a shitty person like I, no, just I know. replied to him and said, like, I don't think that this is accurate. Like, I, this is why. And then he, he was hitting it. He, oh, he was already hitting it. All right. He read he yeah. read your first <laughs> sentence. Like, no, you didn't agree with me. I don't like yeah. that. <laughs> he's clearly thin skinned. Clearly. Yeah, uh, he's, he sure. does great work. Clearly very thin. Though. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, to go back on the Tim Stewart thing, I, I do want to quickly bring up just in case uh, someone listening to this for the first time or is visiting us for the first time, they have some background. So this is what Tim Stewart said back in, I believe, October, November. Quote, for us, when we think about the business gaming as it relates to Microsoft and with Activision, operating leverage and margin expansion is definitely a piece of the puzzle. That's important for what we're talking about right now. At the highest levels, you go from what was a lower margin third party entity that we sold on our store to a high margin first party business so when you think about the xbox component of call of duty you go from a from that low margin business to a high margin business then what you do is you also expand and say we're now driving high margin sales on playstation oh nintendo prior to its purchase of activision blizzard uh microsoft this is uh, uh by the way from um um uh, who did i get vgc uh, this is uh, reaffirming the 10-year deal to bring Call of Duty to Nintendo and keep it on PlayStation. Quote, uh, continue the quote, and that's really lastly where we're going into this business, is that expansion of operating leverage, where we think about placing our bets, first-party subscription, advertising, those are all high-margin businesses that we want to expand into. And what you'll hear from us more and more is a bit of a change of strategy. And again, not announcing anything broadly here. But our mission is to bring our first party experiences, our subscription services to every screen that can play a game. That means smart TVs, mobile devices. That means we, uh, people who have thought as of competitors in the past, like PlayStation, Nintendo, we're going to NVIDIA GeForce Now, their gaming subscription. I think I can end there. Uh, he told us. And I, get, I, I, I will be that guy and be like, I, I called it. He told us like what he was trying to do. And, you know. No one piggybacked on this. No one like we just kind of like right, wrote it off. This is the CFO of Microsoft. <laughs> like he knows what he's talking about. And we see it. We we were told this three or four months ago. And wow, we are really in that 
reality where we are probably about to see major changes in the Xbox platform, a potential move into a more third party publisher that is that just so happens to like ship a box every like 10 years, whatever, whatever. I don't know how they'll work that out. Hopefully they keep making boxes. I'll keep adding that. I hope they keep making boxes. I want a box. If they don't make boxes anymore, I'm probably not with the. I'm probably not with them anymore. I'm probably on a play. I'm probably just playing PlayStation at that point. What did you think about this? And also, when you read this, uh, when it came out, did you did you kind of see it coming too? I mean, I don't blame people because it does kind of seem like a thing that you could write off. But did you see this coming as well? Yeah, I, I mean, I think eventually Microsoft would love to have Game Pass on every platform. I think the the challenge is going to be having those platforms allow you to have Game Pass on yes. their platform. Yes, that's important. Because, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't see Nintendo or Sony uh, allowing the Game Pass to go on their platform because it's cannibalizing their own subscriptions and services, um, especially if Game Pass is a better value proposition, right? Like if, if it includes Call of Duty, if it includes like all of these games that um, are first party that we're finally getting a, a good flow of, like that's going to challenge their own sales. Um, but yeah, I, I go back to I, I don't see that happening anytime soon because I don't see them allowing that. So I feel like Microsoft is, you know, still going to be in the same position. They're just going to release some more games uh, at full retail price on those platforms to try to make up some development costs because AAA games are getting so much more expensive nowadays. And just as a like, reminder, Spider-Man 2, $315 million to develop. $315 yeah insane and like halo infinite was rumored like 500 million dollars uh which is a ton of money like ridiculous uh definitely yeah, didn't see and, it <laughs> yeah and you gotta you gotta make that money up somehow so i it, it, it's not surprising to me uh at on the back of this comment i absolutely think that that would be their ultimate plan now whether they can get there i don't know and also the other thing we haven't talked about but Please. I think is very important is Phil Spencer has also talked about how he wants to build a mobile store. Yes. That is very Xbox important focused. to Microsoft. Yes. Very important to Microsoft yeah. that they set up a mobile store. We're seeing Apple move away from their um, closed house, if you will, the way they've run yeah. the app store, the way they've had iPhone in the EU. We're seeing them completely break the bear down to allow you. They're not changing that in America's mind you, but right. That's the beginning, not yet. right? That not yet. Once <laughs> one domino falls, you you imagine at some point that'll happen here. But that is that is, you, you, it's very important to bring up. We are seeing shifts. Maybe we see some sort of through line in all of this. Again, we remember play anywhere. Maybe that's utilized more into this. Hey, play anywhere. Once we have our mobile store up, maybe it's triple buy. Once you buy, you buy it on Xbox. You buy it on a PlayStation or something, or maybe, or, or maybe it's just hey, have Game Pass. Guess what? Play it on your Xbox. Play it on your mobile phone because it's streaming through the cloud. Play it on your Samsung TV or whenever that deals up. Any TV, your two hundred dollar little stick we sold you, whatever. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe that, maybe that plays a factor. And one more thing to go back to is, uh, you know, when Microsoft made the decision to release all of their first party games on Xbox and PC, a yes. lot of people signaled that as the end of Xbox. That as is a true. Hardware I remember, I remember company. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a and good point. like, it's a very similar conversation, right? Because, you know, if you want to buy a PC, you can go buy a PC and play all the Xbox games. And Microsoft doesn't care because they you're don't. in there. You're, you're buying you're playing their on Windows. Stuff. They don't give a shit. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you're buying. You're buying their software and services once yeah. again. Uh, and um, I and like, for instance, you have Steam on PC as well. So Microsoft has also released first-party games on Steam alongside their windows store game pass alternatives yeah and has you know has the steam version cannibalized one or the other or has the windows uh store cannibalized steam sales i don't think so i don't so believe I, so if you if you look at starfield for instance I, that was the number three best-selling game on steam oh yeah I, I might be messing that up but i'm pretty sure that's right which 
that's pretty good for a thing you just buy and have it, you know, you just pay a subscription, right. you don't have to buy it. Now, I had gotten to an argument with a few people with this. That's that is a good example, but Starfield is a different beast. We're talking about Bethesda, we're talking about a big name, we're talking about Skyrim in space is what they called it, right? So, you know, that has a lot more weight than a lot of other games would. So hard to to use this case and be like, well, clearly it doesn't cannibalize sales. And it's like, well, that's that's a pretty, you know, that's not the same. You know, that's not the same as releasing Fable or something. And, and it's, you know, like so it's I think that's important to also bring up. I, I got in, I actually got into a couple people discussing these various things. Um, it's I don't know if you've ever talked to random people. Um, do you know Colt Eastwood? You know this man? You know this guy? I I know who he is. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. He, um, he's so, obnoxious. He's pretty. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was talking to a couple of his people, um, that were like trying to defend a, cer- a specific talking point. It's not important on, on what it was, but um, it is pretty clear that a lot of these people actually don't know what they're talking about. People are bringing up the numbers we brought up and said, look how much profit they made. Well, you don't know what profit is. That's, that's not profit. You know, just, this is right. an example. It's like, I think, um, I think a lot of the reason too, that it's looked upon negatively. If we go all the way back to like Xbox being looked at inevitably, we have a lot of, you know, Frank, I'm, I'm just going to say like dumbasses, like they don't know what they're talking yes. about, but they're pretending that they know what to talk about on these various social medias. And it does make them look much worse. Uh, because probably like uh, since there's a shorter amount of us, it's easier to see the more negative because that makes up more of the overall percentage. Maybe who knows? But I think that's might be an, another reason because it does seem like it gets a little crazy out there in the console war Twitter. But I'm not really in it. Every now and then I see that guy say just <laughs> the craziest shit. <laughs> clearly yeah. he has no idea what he's talking about though there's the console fanboys are a different beast there's oh like yeah they are different they're different run months. on like mountain dew and just pure rage yeah yeah well who's the other one red dragon the oh i don't know him oh is he a oh, playstation yeah. one yeah god he just says the craziest shit <laughs> i'm just like what the hell yeah. every now and then it's fun though i don't i wish it wasn't there but it is a little funny when you like think about it because it's like, what are they doing? Like, do they go to work and then they come home and they're like, I can't wait to like, yeah, I can't wait do to they, like defend Xbox or like talk about Xbox. It's weird. Do they actually believe the shit that's spewing out of their <laughs> yeah, mouth? Yeah, well? I imagine. No, I imagine they're just repeating it from like whoever they like or something. Yeah. I don't know. But it is. It's very. I don't know. It's a little funny, but I wish we just stopped. Uh, Starting back to what we were discussing. Uh, prior i wanted to ask um a question do you think game pass right now is a failure of its original vision or whatever its vision is I do you see it as a failure or success a failure to who i guess Ooh, would be my question xbox xbox not Mic- not microsoft xbox specifically is it a failure to xbox is it a failure to Phil Spencer? Maybe that helps. I don't think it's a failure to Phil Spencer. No, okay. I, I, I feel you I think feel it's like something Phil's... he's so proud of, et cetera. Yeah. You know, OK. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like every time Phil talks about Game Pass, he talks about how uh, monumental of a moment that was for him to get to announce Game Pass and like how he feels like it empowers many smaller developers, especially. Yeah. Uh, and like. I think he's even talked about before, like he has like two of his top, you know, moments of his career. And like, number one is backwards compatibility on Xbox one, which is another, which is a huge, huge thing that I I agree. Not really brought up that much. Uh, You didn't have to pay anything. You didn't have to do anything. You just got your library back, which was, that's a pretty, yeah, that was a pretty big deal. And that was after they had said, you know with the it's previous regime it was not possible and yeah. that's the exact same thing that sony said but yet we yep. didn't hear any criticism or for the most part from the sony side of things which is, which is where i go back to my whole thing of like i don't feel like we have an even yeah, amount really of even, right? criticism yeah. yeah um but yes uh, like that he talked about that being his crown jewel achievement and then game pass is like number two for him so like yeah I feel like it's a success in Phil's eyes in terms of like what he wanted to accomplish with the service. Uh, 
in terms of like, is it successful as a business practice right now? Probably not. Um, yeah, probably not. Is right? it is it successful for the consumers? Absolutely. Oh, hell yeah! It's fucking great. I love deal. it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I, I like. You know, I don't have to. Well, I still buy some of them, obviously. But I, you know, yeah. every now and then a game comes out. I was like, oh, cool. I didn't have to buy that. I can just boom, 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 boom play. You know, I still bought Starfield and these things, but because I, I want to give them more money. But yeah, I know. Every now and then, it's <laughs> awesome. Like, hey, oh, I loved that indie game. And you like, by the way, Day One Expo. I'm like, perfect. Persona Three is a good example. I'll eventually buy that game. But right now, you know, I could just play it for a little bit. I don't have to buy it. I can, I can buy it later. Yeah. Party animals. I don't know if you've played that. I have not. A ton of fun. I, I, it a looked ton it looked fun. It reminded me of um the the other game that kind of looks Beast. like it. yeah 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 Game Beast. It reminds me of that. Yeah. I was like, wow, that looks hilarious. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I'm trying to think of where else we should drive this. First off, um, I didn't ask you. I apologize. Um, uh, when do you have to go? I, we, we're in an hour plus. You, you got to go soon. I, I didn't check with you prior to the recording. As soon as we you joined, I was like, let's get in there. I want to talk about this. No, I got time. So all right, let's wherever you let's talk. Go. Let's talk about a couple more things now. Sure. We have a couple. We have a couple avenues to jump from. Right. We could talk about Game Pass coming to uh, these different. Um, <sighs> you know what? I wanted I want your opinion on something or at least your your thought on on kind of a thing that's been mulling in my head, right? From a maybe not not necessarily a shareholder, but like do you think from a perspective that you're at high end Xbox, right? You're you're an executive or something, you're looking for the ROI. Do you think this is the wisest move going forward? That is we we've talked about all of this really. Um but do you think at the end of the day, if they go the route we think of, do you think this is wise? And then I have a second question after that. Uh, For the future of like this brand, do you think like this move is going to be fruitful? Do you think this is a band aid almost to a problem that might be bigger? Because we because at this point, I, I really can't imagine what their operating costs must be for just Xbox. Like how much money do they have to make to just be? just be run right because we have activision blizzard now we have all of the bethesda we have all the other xbox game studios like you can't i can't imagine i mean that's off the top of my head yeah. what that's is that like thirty thousand people or something like that i like i don't even know how many of just x but like how many how many people are working there at this point that like how much do you have to make to even just push push the the goal post ahead and be like mm. we've hit profit like <laughs> I know, of right. course, we have avenues of Game Pass Core. We have that renewable money coming that is important to the service, no doubt, no doubt. But when we eliminate game sales being kind of a factor, when we eliminate Game Pass, uh, or sorry, when we eliminate game sales because of Game Pass, maybe it does kind of color in, well, we can't make game sales on Xbox anymore because of how Game Pass works. Maybe that makes more, a little more sense now why this is happening. Yeah, uh, and also like, uh, hmm, is is it? I don't know. Is this the path that they should take? I don't know. Uh, I think it's interesting because you know they are profitable right now. Uh, I think actually just a, a few weeks ago uh, we got a report that Xbox had uh, overtaken Windows as the more profitable uh subset of microsoft like i think it's the third largest now uh, mm. of microsoft after the abk acquisition which yeah. is important because yeah because oh. of the muas from i remember uh, i actually have that written down here saudi novella said he had we had da, da, da. we now have over 200 million monthly active users alone inclusive of activision blizzard king end quote that is that's important to of course bring in like they're including the purchase but that's no slouch absolutely yeah uh and your question just to go back to your question about uh is this the right path like i feel like in the position they're in right now they have done everything they possibly could have to turn around the perception of their console in terms of you know this ecosystem that 
I feel like they're in a hole at this point that they can't get out of. They can't dig themselves out of. No matter how hard they try, how many good policies they have, you know, they're again, they've had a bunch of bad policies as well. But I feel like they're at a point now that they cannot dig out. And Sony has taken such a grasp on the market share for this space that I feel like they have to pivot and do something else. Yeah. And again, I don't think that has to mean them pulling out of hardware. I just feel like that means they have to explore other ways to make money because at the end, end of the day, that's the only thing Microsoft cares about as a whole is making yeah. money. You imagine um, Phil's been on the record. I'm surprised he said it, but um, it's cool that he does. Uh, Game Pass is stagnant. It's plateaued. You you've gotten everyone you're going to get, right? Right. If Xbox can't expand itself into the content market share to then get more sales, I remember you brought up earlier, they don't care about console sales. I would actually counter they do, but I would argue they they might actually care about Game Pass more. But to have someone buy your console, that means you're most likely, I'm sure they have percentages, but like this percent of people have a chance when they buy the system to then get game pass. So like, I'm sure they still care, but I, I do agree that they probably at the end of the day want to see subscription number tick up uh, more than they would care about selling their consoles. But then you'd have to argue like, you know, do they care about the sales rip from their Xbox store? You know, 30% cut from a lot of these publishers, eh, you know, so it's, it's, it's interesting to, to discuss, but yeah, I, I think bringing that up, bringing, f- finding ourselves in the, and maybe, or not us, but of course them in their hole that they've maybe dug themselves. Who knows? Maybe I'm curious if the Activision Blizzard King deal just hastened to the inevitable or is the sole reason that this is happening unclear uh, because clearly they knew, right? Phil knew this would happen. I wonder if the schedule was maybe sped up a little bit. Like uh, we just spent, you know, six, nine billion dollars, like, you're selling Halo on everything. You know, maybe maybe that's the scenario he's found himself in. I don't know. But yeah, I I find it hard to imagine. I don't know. It, it seems so weird to think that was I don't know. Did Game Pass help Xbox? I, I think it did, but it's hard to see now. Like maybe it fucks them from not getting their market share from selling games. I, I, don't, I don't know. So let, let me position it a diff- different way for you. If they weren't to go down this path of putting some of their games on other platforms, yeah, seemingly they would have to do something else. Yeah, what is that something else? If yeah, if they were to, you know, increase the price of Game Pass for instance, if they increase it $5, let's just say. I, I right. don't know if that, uh, yeah, that, that Yeah, let's make but, up a number. Yeah, let's just say they increase it $5 like is that going to be enough to make the difference of yeah. them being interested in Game Pass as opposed to releasing on other pro- platforms? Yeah, and, like, and you have and to like imagine the negative connotations. Behind yeah, you, you have to imagine they have stats, right? Like, yeah, they, they probably had an end goal price because I we all know ten bucks was not the end goal price. Like, it was something right. else. Was it twenty? Was it fifteen? I'm not sure. But you have to imagine they have like numbers saying like, look, if we raise it this much, this is how many people will lose. But this is how much money we'll gain. So you you have to assume that that probably is not acceptable, maybe. Or, you know, and and they since they're plateaued and there is no way to diverge Game Pass. Right. You've already you already cut, you know, the market's done on Xbox and PC. They've reached who they want. PC mm-hmm. is a whole thing I, I frankly don't understand and can't really articulate on, so I, I won't touch on it, but sp- strictly Xbox, you know, you've plateaued, so we do have to sell our games, uh, or hopefully, not core games, but our recently purchased games or games that we don't necessarily care about making exclusive. I bring up Blade because, one, it was really weird that they didn't say what consoles it were shipping on. Two, it's obvious now I didn't say it because it wasn't going to be exclusive, but also looking at the Spider-Man deal, it probably, it probably costs too much, too much money, too much money to make it exclusive. Maybe because if we look at the Spider-Man deal in the insomniac leaks, they're paying quite a bit of money to keep that thing exclusive, to keep 
Marvel happy. They have so many different uh, things in their deal. If it doesn't reach X amount of, of units sold, I don't know if you remember that number. I think it was 10 million, something like that. Yeah. Um, they have the right to leave it. Like it's so many things where it's like, okay, that makes sense. Why you make sure this thing is sold while you bundle it in systems. Why, you know, it, it, a lot of things are making sense. Now, maybe they went to, they wanted this blade game for, um, I think it's arcade Leon. Is that right? Or, or yes. Yeah. Arcane I thought so. Leon. And I, and maybe they went to them and were like, you know, this is how much to, to keep it going. And they're like, no, that's not happening. So we'll just make it multi-platform. Uh, Maybe maybe that maybe that is the case. Maybe again, they're trying to dig this hole out, or this is some shrewd business move where it's like we're gonna make money off our competitors, and we don't give two shits uh, because we have Game Pass. That's all we care about. If you come to our service, you know you'll see our cool games. Maybe you know they they got the master key. Maybe there's some why. Maybe they have internal tests that there's some game that's gonna blow up, and and maybe a PlayStation years is like, well, I can go over there and only spend. 20 bucks and have all my games or whatever. Yes. I don't know. That's actually a great point I was going to bring up as well. Like if if you're releasing a handful of games uh to go multi-platform on PlayStation Switch wherever, uh you're also positioning yourself to put the Xbox brand in front of more people that previously maybe hadn't been in front of it. Right. And you know, you're you're initiating that conversation with that end user and saying like you know it obviously is not going to say verbatim in the game like hey we've got come game play, pass come come play. yeah exactly <laughs> but like spill coming does. out like what's up that's yeah. <laughs> yeah, an advertisement in the yeah. game. <laughs> but no like it, it does put it in your head as a a person that's playing on this other platform like hey there's this other platform over here that if I bought their console, I would get all the games included if I paid the subscription as opposed to paying $70 for every one of these games. So, like, I feel like that still incentivizes somewhat to the hardware side. Now, don't get me wrong. I think exclusives more so incentivize that. But if you could have the best of both worlds where you have some exclusives still on Xbox and some that are going multi-platform, you may be able to pull some of those people over just for the value proposition that Game Pass yeah. offers and you're getting the games included for free. It's just funny. We, we almost went full circle to what my original plan was with the Activision Blizzard King deal. I was Because I was always in the camp of like, they're not making it exclusive. It costs too much money, right? Call of Duty will be everywhere. But you do have the avenue of saying, look at look at this. You got to spend $70 on Call of Duty. Doesn't that suck? But guess yeah. what? You come over here, 12 bucks a month. You get this, you get Fable, you get, you know, I don't know, Blade, you know, et cetera. Like, there's so many games that probably are question marks, and maybe they got some fire fucking lineup, and they're like, bro, we're going to, like, make money from these, uh, our competitors. We're going to put it all in hope. <laughs> Dan, if we're here in like a year and they're like buying Ubisoft or some garbage, I'm gonna be pissed. I want them to invest in themselves now. No more. All we right. have like figure out how to make games, and I, and I have a. I, I think we are we'll, we're about to probably disagree very soon, very hardly. But I, I have a quick question I want to bring up right now. We had a dirge of games gone for a very long time. It seems like that's over. Who? Do we blame, right? It doesn't really feel like anything was punished. Matt Booty's still here. Phil's still here. Sarah Bond's still here. It seems like we're struggling to, one, maintain a a fruitful second-party relationships with a lot of developers. PlayStation's very good at that. I mean, we can name for days their second-party their second party relationships, their third-party relationships, etc., I feel like we're missing that in the Xbox ecosystem. It seems like we're missing many options where Game Pass could flourish. I never care about the number being 100 on Game Pass. I would much prefer it being 50 and it's like great games or 25 and it being all amazing games. You know, um, to to kind of bring up um, something very random, but in our top 10 games of the year discussion, we had Emmett Watkins Jr. on from um, many things, Video Game Utopia, etc., and a lot of his games were these Steam games uh, that he plays on his Steam Deck. 
and looking through and I'm like, you know, it's where, where is, where's Sarah? Where, where are these people? Go to these devs, get them on your platform. Let's not forget what just happened with Baldur's Gate. That just happened. That is a right. huge game. If you read the emails, they they hugely misrepresented that game. They theorized it would cost them like five million bucks to get it on Game Pass. I don't know what the fuck they were smoking. That, that is not how much money you would get it, get on there. And they were going to completely ignore the platform before Phil stepped in. Clearly, Phil stepped in and was like, what we got to do to get right. to get you on? And they dropped co-op like, well, and we're like, that's yeah. fine. Uh, or split screen co-op specifically is yes. what they dropped. Sorry, I, I should have been clear. Thank you for catching me on that. But it seems like to me, we're struggling on producing meaningful games. We don't have anything to really point to. Everything we have of recent success, Forza is a mainstay that's been here for a very long time. We haven't seen Coalition Initiative in a very long time. We haven't seen anything of uh, Fruit Fro really from Bethesda, stick with me, from the start point of the purchase, right? We've seen Starfield, but hard to give credit to Xbox on that one. I think I do credit them for giving them extra time. I think that game clearly would have been buggier if it was on Bethesda to relaunch that game. But it actually probably was very uh, buttoned up and very clean because you got Daddy Xbox to, to keep you to keep <laughs> you going. You don't have to worry about releasing Starfield right now. Give it six months, polish it up, make it presentable, yeah. then you push it out. I have my problems with the game, but at the very least, it ran pretty well. I said a lot there. Do, what do you think about the leadership? Do you blame them for any of this? Because I frankly blame them for quite a bit, and it doesn't seem like anyone at Xbox or Microsoft gives two fucks and just lets so, them do what they want. I will preface this with, uh, with saying uh, Matt booty. I'm not a huge fan of, I've okay. never been a, I've never been a fan of Matt booty. I think that how does he still have his job? I'm, I'm not, honestly, that, I'm trying not to be a dick here, man. Like I really try no, to be I, somewhat positive. Yeah. How does he still have a job? What is he, I, what is he fucking doing over there? Yeah, I don't know. I I'm not a big Matt Booty fan. I don't think that he represents the brand well or gets, you know, like you're saying, gets our first party content, which is his main job. But I do think that at least some of this is uh, a consequence of timing as well, because. People forget also in 2018, Microsoft had literally four developers that they owned 343 three, the coalition uh mohang uh yeah and turn and 10 turn 10 and turn 10 that was literally their entire first party in 2018 which was you know six years ago uh and they had that e3 press conference where they announced the acquisitions of ninja theory playground undead labs compulsion uh i'm missing one but uh, uh shit go ahead and keep going no, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get it for you you're good um so they announced all of the oh they of course they created the new studio the initiative sorry that was the fifth one yes uh yes yeah so they announced those five at that e3 and then they announced obsidian and uh and tim schaefer studio double fine double later fine. that year or yeah. next year yeah so all of those happened in 2018 2019 well you're looking at you know, Undead Labs, they were literally about to release State of Decay 2. It hadn't released yet. So State of Decay 2 just came out right after that acquisition happened. So they're not ready for a new game for many years, obviously, because we still don't have that I, game. I would argue but, they're probably like the main people I'd point to was like, why haven't you launched a game yet? I understand that they're like right. a small team, but yeah. they've they've garnered more since then. Where are you guys at? I don't. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not. You know, I feel like we should have at least seen State of Decay three, like at right. least at this point, seen it. I think, yeah, and yes, I agree with you. But I will circle back to that in a second. Uh, yeah, go ahead. 
playground playground games has been the most consistent they've been phenomenal with forza horizon literally every two years they've been like clockwork which you, you can probably been, say that they're they're insomniac compl- not in the exact yeah. same way but right. like they are yeah. incredibly reliable they they know what the yes. fuck they're doing and we're gonna see if they can expand on that in in fable but yeah. you know keep going please yeah uh ninja theory who had just released hellblade uh not that long before this acquisition as well yep uh so they weren't ready for a game, new game for a long time compulsion had literally just released just. We, happy we happy few yeah, yeah. uh so that, that was in game happened. preview when they were acquired i'm pretty sure too so it wasn't even fully released yeah. i don't if i'm Correct. remembering my time right it wasn't even you a fully are. released Correct. game yes uh you've got obsidian who was already entered into a contract with private division for outer worlds in 2019 when that came out yep so all of these studios my point is all of these studios all had games that had either just came out or are about to come out at that time and i think that's why now this year we are seeing such a renaissance of games and announcements from xbox because these studios are finally getting to the point where they are ready to show things off. Now, whether or not they should be taking this long is a whole other conversation, and that's where I think it comes into play with Mad Booty and making and sure I you're will, managing. Your and I will say, properly. it's been six years since we've seen pretty much everyone you just listed. Right. Yeah. Uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. Uh, Phil, maybe. Maybe they're friends. Maybe he is doing some fucking magic over there. I don't know. <laughs> but what is going what is going on? Why why is it taking so long for all these studios? I agree with you that it was an unfortunate timing. They did literally just acquire them when they're finishing game. Let's not think about how long it takes for them to get comfortable in Microsoft and how it works with yeah. with transitioning pay time and you know all, the, all these little boring logistical stuff no one thinks about. It's been almost six years. We're getting close to seven yeah. for some of well, them. And even 343 with Halo Infinite. It, we went from Halo 5 in 2015, and it took them six years to make Halo Infinite, and the, the game still wasn't ready. It wasn't still ready. Wasn't ready. It, it, should, it should have still. been delayed. It should have been uh, delayed again whole, a year, yeah, another year. That's a whole other story. Uh, yep. But that was one thing that I had arguments with Gage back in the day because gage was rightfully so i'm not saying he's wrong uh, pointing directly at bonnie ross studio head of 343 at the time uh she had been the head since 2007 when 343 was created and i love bonnie ross i think she loved halo i i really admired her love of halo i agree however however i think that obviously now in hindsight we can look back and say she probably was part of the problem but in the time i I, in the time i had argued with gage about it because i was like listen you you have a female studio head that already this doesn't exist much across the industry as it is and for us to point the blame at a female studio head that we don't even know what's happening behind the scenes like yeah there could be a million things that are tying her hands, for instance, like we don't know what's happening. So I always made the argument of, well, hang on, let's just sit back and let things shake out because I don't want to be out here criticizing her and then end up finding out, you know, Phil's got her hands tied or something. I, yeah. You know, there's a million. Yeah, who knows? But we didn't have a lot of information. It really was guesswork at that time. I was right. Pr- I was more on Gage's side. I remember I, I remember actually I was having a conversation yeah. around this time. Uh, clear. It was clear. I think it's a little bit of both. Honestly, clearly it was three, four, three. Something happened there. I know a lot of problems where they one were bleeding talent. They could not keep talent, and two, it was so much contract work, and no one was actually working on the game and seeing a vision through. I know a lot of and that tech, was a problem. Go ahead. Tech debt. Yeah, tech yeah, debt as well. Yeah, and I mean, literally, they're using a twenty-year-old engine. The, the base of the subspace engine is still that twenty-year-old engine that Bungie even uses to this day with yep. Destiny. Like, yep, and then the they problems, and then they've dropped that shit, and they're like, "We're making other stuff." Like, <laughs> the guy left. Yeah. I remember that. That the guy who knows how to use it, so they moved on to other. I don't know. Do we do we know what they're working on now with the engine? That was just rumors, right? That they're going to Unreal Five. 
343, four, three, yeah, they they are hiring for their four. next project, yeah, yeah. and it is Unreal Engine That's 5. That's what I thought. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, three. I mean, I think I think if we have to point the blame to leadership, I think three four three is actually a pretty good example, and Halo Infinite is a good example too. Something was going on there. I think it's clear that something in higher leadership. I I frankly don't really blame. I don't think it was talent. I think it was no. frankly high high executives fucking everything up. To what degree? I don't know. But why wasn't that sound the alarms? Why why did was that allowed to happen? They were given a year, and it still was fucked like so I, I guess we've come to the point and there isn't really a thing we can solve because it's just you and me but it's just so strange that in all honesty in xbox leadership hasn't really changed that much didn't they hire sarah bond um not hire uh she was promoted to that in god i don't remember but she's pretty recent uh Correct in her, yeah, she's like four years or something like that since she's been there uh, in that uh, specific position. Uh, she was just promoted in uh late last year to the Xbox president, I think, uh, which oversees like the platform and hardware. That was the things. restructuring for the yes. ABK deal, yeah, that makes sense, yeah, that makes yes. sense, yep. Um, but before that, I don't remember when I don't she, what year I don't she came I, in. it was like. I think I want to say 2019. That could be fucking way off. I don't know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I think I think that's a big problem. Although we are fixing the we don't have games thing. The, partially the reason it's fixed is because they bought Bethesda. And then who knows how this year will pan out. It looks like it's going to be good. We, we're, we're seeing Hellblade 2. We're seeing... Um, I have them written Indiana down somewhere. Jones. I'm already blanking. Yeah, thank you. Indiana Jones. Nothing yeah. with firm dates. But, you know, we'll get dates later. I understand that. Yeah. It's just... Wish we had them. So we were a little more confident, but alas. Avowed. Avowed, of course. Can't wait for that game. Uh, that that is yeah. a um I I uh you weren't here, of course, but I completely admitted I was completely wrong about that game. I said it looked like complete garbage, and it did when it first was released. But it looks beautiful now. I love it. Uh the I don't love how they were talking with the the one guy. That was weird. Oh yeah. Definitely weird, seems like yeah. we tried to cut from that as fast as possible. Don't know why yeah. that was the vertical slice we picked. It seems super, super stiff. Everything else looks it's, sick, though. I don't know why. People said they weren't liking the combat. I thought it's it kind sick. of sick. It's kind of funny that you say that you liked it uh, because, like, I felt very, like, this looks good, but not, like, phenomenal. Yeah. And it's the exact same reaction that I had to The Outer Worlds when I first saw it. Oh, yeah. And... Yeah. The funny thing is, is I fucking love the Outer Worlds. So That's my good. game of the year from 2019. So, so like me seeing Avowed and saying it looks good, I'm very excited because that you know I know what that did for me for yeah. Outer Worlds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't I I can't wait to see to to see more of that because I I in reason I was also disappointed by Starfield was like I was really thinking we were getting Skyrim and we didn't really, especially with the level ups. Yeah. I was like. Please just let me like use what I want. I don't have to get pins and badges. Uh, that that whole thing was a mess. But with the uh, about they're doing the thing I love, where it's like, you know, you want to use a sword and a wand, do it. You know, and you'll level up. And I loved Skyrim for that. So, and it's surprising more games don't ape that. I would, if I was making an open world Western RPG, I'd be all over that shit. Fucking rip! I'd rip them the fuck off. <laughs> like I'd be like, yeah, yeah, wear heavy armor. It'll level you. You know, it'll level up as you wear it and stuff. Love it. Um, yeah. So we talked about that. In to as we close out, I want to ask you another hard question. Frankly, g g let's say you're Phil, and Satya was like, "Look, you're right. You can do what you want." go what do you do right now right you have this maelstrom firestorm happening right now do you continue ship do you go with this multi-platform thing do you steer course what do you think what would you do in this scenario that you are the one and only phil spencer you're now dan you're now dan the ceo of xbox dan spencer no. dan spencer <laughs> I like that. Dan Spencer. <laughs> That's incredible. I, I just want to say that I'm just the happiest man alive. Yeah, yeah. How Thank much you for... money I'm making. Yeah, yeah. oh so. my God. <laughs> yeah, Phil doesn't give two fuck. I'm like, yeah, you guys would be mad looking yeah, at his fake it. account. 
Yeah. I don't give a shit. I'm a, I'm a Microsoft <laughs> CEO. I got stock <laughs> options going. Yeah, yeah. I'll cash out and fucking leave. I don't care. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, so if I'm Phil Spencer, what am I doing? Um, I think initially it you're in like you're very, in right now. You're God. You know, yeah. let's just assume you're God. You're in it right now. Like, do you like yeah. what do you do? My very first thing I'm doing is I'm cutting the Xbox Series X by a hundred dollars. That's going to three ninety nine, yeah, three ninety nine price point because that's a much better price point. You're competing a lot more with that price point. Drop the Series S another fifty dollars, so that would make it two forty nine. So you're so, eating shit right now. <laughs> like you, your yeah. first, your first thing is we're gonna eat shit for a long time. <laughs> yes. So cutting cutting costs on both both of those and hoping that that yeah. fuels a, a big insurgence of people interested in the platform. And uh, yeah, I'm fucking going guns blazing in the next uh, E3 or summer game fest, whatever you want to call right. it uh, event. And I'm showing as much as I can that's coming in the next 12 to 24 months. Uh, and that's just, you know, the fact of the matter is people want to see games coming out. So if you show everything that's coming out in the next two years, I think that's giving you a, a very large amount of games that should be in relatively good state to show. Uh, so yeah, I would do all of that. I would, I would, I would announce that call of duty is coming to game pass and, include call of duty and game pass keep the price of game pass the same for now down the line it'd probably have to go up in price but for now just trying to increase subscriber accounts get call of duty on the platform to incentivize people that are playing on other platforms to play there instead um even you could do shit in game to you know kind of lean people towards that by saying like if you play on xbox you might uh you might I don't know, get something. I know Phil said he doesn't want to do that, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot that they could do. But the thing is, is if all of that fails, what am I doing at that point? I'm probably doing exactly what they're doing. I'm, yeah, I'm putting my games Try to on recoup other costs. platforms. Yeah, yeah, because like, how else do you do it? How else do you make money other than, you know, if I'm reporting to Satya Nadella and I got a, an answer why we're not, you know, hitting our metrics that we're supposed to be hitting uh fuck i don't know i'm <laughs> cashing out my stock options I yeah like ah yeah. fuck this was awesome <laughs> but yeah. uh bye yeah, yeah i gotta i i like i like i like dan spencer because it's <laughs> probably we're it's it's a similar like a dying star we're going out fucking awesome though like we're, like it's gonna yeah. be dope we're, like we're eating good <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, uh, in, in, if I'm given like the same situation, I probably keep course, make people make high execs happy to keep specific games exclusive, but I withhold some of the most important things that we own and try to steer away from game pass being the only solution, but maybe trying to pepper in like, because I, Maybe the problem that all spur in this is like maybe just they're not selling games and they are not making enough Game Pass to to cover the gap. So that's like this. Maybe you have to. And what's annoying is like the only probably way to fix that is make games more expensive and then making Game Pass more expensive. I'm still shocked they didn't up it more. Yeah. We talked about them trying to do that with Xbox Live Gold. That was clearly an executive like decision from Microsoft. And then people got mad and they showed, look, look, they don't want to do it. I don't know why they were going to. They did a, f a full on jump. Netflix didn't double in the next five years. Like it didn't double one year. They did right. it over at, you know, one year. Time. It's only two bucks yeah. next year. It's only two bucks. It's it's like two dollars every few years. And people, you know, it's like the frog in the boiling pot kind of thing like people don't really realize because they like the thing and they're just gonna let it happen why we haven't raised game pass i i don't know if you have an opinion on this but i feel like that's kind of been a missed opportunity if you would have asked me in 2019 what i would think game pass was in like 2024 i would have been like probably nearly doubled from like the ten dollars like it probably is closer to like 15 to 18 ultimates probably like that sweet spot of maybe like 25 or 8 ish, you know, it's like somewhere around there. Uh, or maybe it's like maybe it's like a very good deal to make sure people are paying for ultimate because 
you imagine they make a shit ton of money off Ultimate, right? So, like, you want that to be, like, the obvious choice, maybe? I don't know, but I, I definitely going off that, and I, I do really hope we don't see a situation where we're, like, pretty much no exclusive anymore and we're just third party. That would be very silly. Um, that is an easy segification of yourself. I understand that this is not the same thing. It's not 1990s, whatever the fuck. Um, or that was technically 2005 or I think something like that. I don't remember. Mm. Um, but th- it's, it's, it's different. I understand. I know everyone's like, they don't care about selling games. I want game. I get it, but <laughs> it didn't work. So what is the next solution? Probably this, to be honest, right? Clearly, they didn't want to raise the increased prices. Again, not really sure why. I'm sure they have metrics saying, well, fuck, look, dumbass. This is why. Because, <laughs> like, right. they, they know five bucks now is 30% less, completely destroying the point of re- raising the price. The reason Netflix did it was because they had you buy the balls for 10 years, and then they raised the price. Yeah. Um, they bled money for... I mean, famously, they made no money until like two years ago or something like that. <laughs> like, it's yeah. Businesses aren't really run that way until unless you know it really what you're doing. And clearly, they did. They did. And even and, the negative connotation that goes with increasing the, the yeah. price of Game Pass, maybe that factors in as well. Uh, yeah. Into why the is the three trillion dollar company want more my yeah. money? I'm like, well, they right. need. Uh, Xbox isn't the three trillion part. <laughs> I don't know if you know right. that. <laughs> like that, that's not the part making money. Uh, the, uh, Microsoft clearly doesn't probably. Well, this isn't e- exactly true, but like they're probably on like the lowest rung in terms of CEO priority. I know. Um, yeah. so, I know Sati is really into AI. F- oh, fuck, that's something yeah. we didn't even talk cloud. about. AI yeah. cloud, getting that into gaming. We'll see that more. Um, I know. Um, Jade Raymond studio is thinking about developing games in the cloud. I'll be curious to see if maybe Microsoft is trying to make some sort of tool base. Cause if they can make a like a tool base to make video games, cloud based or something, imagine how much money they'd rip off that. They make a yeah. half engine, half cloud engine thing. And they start selling that to people. They got like a unity or something RPG game maker type of thing that they could rip money off of. I don't know. I, I'm just spitballing here now, but. I think Xbox, I think this this next week, we have a week, by the way, of this. So get get used, get ready, everyone <laughs> watching this. It's a week of just thinking and waiting. And you have to, I don't know. Why do you think it, why do you think they're waiting a week? You just, is it just because it's so big? They're just so, I mean, they just think, it's not like it's 10 people they got to like go through it. It's microsoft thing you imagine they have to like well you know i'm booked until wednesday doing x thing i can't just drop all this doing this because microsoft needs me to do this thing so maybe that i don't know i i thought it i was (laughs) funny enough the most shocking thing was we'll talk about this in a week probably i was like you're gonna wait a week people are thinking you're leaving bro like you're gonna wait a week I think I think it goes back to what I was saying before, because I I feel like they were planning the event for spring and they were still having conversations about what games are going where and how that all falls into place. And now I feel like this week is going to be pretty much them trying to figure all that out in one week. Yep. It'll be interesting to see what they come up with next week and see what they talk about. Uh, We know Phil's watching this. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a lot of good yes. ideas to, to sparse through. He, well, he can figure it all out. Dan Spencer has one more thing that he oh. forgot to say, and that is... Yeah, uh, I'm just going to pay map people. Bo- <laughs> fire Matt Booty. Oh, yeah, Fire Matt Booty. Yeah, 100%. That Literally, the first day I'm in, and it's like, hey, yeah. whew, get out of get out of here. Do you <laughs> see that they uh, fired Mike Ybarra? I thought he would replace Matt Booty again. Hmm. I thought I, I, I was betting money. That I was Did like, they're going to... fired? I mean, that's how I took it. If you unless unless Mike Ybarra lied, he tweeted. No, sorry. He was in an interview saying like they would have to like grab me by my hand, hands and legs and rip me out of Blizzard. So he right. and that could have been a lie, you know, but. That's a little fast for him to get out of there, but, you know, maybe they maybe they didn't have him over time. Maybe he got paid all up front and he got all his money and he was like, fuck y'all. But it seemed I mean, to me, I shouldn't have spec so yeah. definitively, so I do apologize about that. No, but no. to me, it seemed like he got fired. 
I suspect, I don't think that he got fired personally because uh, he had a very close relationship with Phil Spencer, especially when he was working, he was working at there. Xbox. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, personally, I don't think he got fired. To me, it seems more so that the um, ABK and Blizzard, uh, or well, fuck, that's all the same thing. ABK is it's fine. <laughs> the, the ABK layoffs happened you know 1900 people obviously that's not just abk that was across it was a lot it was a lot but a a lot of it was abk yeah and i feel like maybe that was the moment where mike was like all right this is too rough for me and like i already made my money and i can sell my stocks like i i'm sure mike yabara is well off at this point with that acquisition oh my god i can't imagine He's probably yeah. hundreds of millions of dollars, probably. I don't know For what sure. his stock was looking like, or how much he would get, but you imagine yeah. well into the hundreds of uh, hundreds of millions. Now, Bobby Kotick, on the other hand, that man was fucking just sprinted out the front door as fast as possible. And, my, and Xbox was like, get the fuck out of here. We can't. We have enough bad press. We cannot. Yes. We cannot let you. I want to ask you a hard question. Yes. Um. Do you think they should have utilized Bobby Kotick before they kicked him out? I understand you probably can't just based off of literally just the PR of it. But that man did something with Activision, whether we like him or not. I, I'm not saying right. I like him, everyone. He was yeah. clearly a shit person. He threatened to kill a woman all, while right. he was working there. <laughs> it was a voicemail. Yes. Like, he left it. Like they, We're talking about a potentially deranged man at this point, but clearly he had something there i'm curious if they picked his brain or if they should have kept him for a little longer i probably still would say no although i think he had valuable stuff i just yeah. don't think don't, i think you that, just can't i think they made the right call and they they kept him around long enough for the transition and then they're like see ya like, yeah we don't need you <laughs> yeah go go enjoy your billions i mean he he has right. stock going back to the 90s yeah. 80s whatever he joined yeah. i forget so that's gonna he's be insane loaded loaded yeah crazy um anything else you want to touch on as we kind of slow down for the day i mean there's something you haven't touched on yet i mean we we always go back and forth on twitter yes, so is there something do, you want yes. to bring up before we go i know you're so busy so i try not to bother you uh, <laughs> no, so who knows kidding. the next time we're gonna we're gonna chat it's true the only thing i will say is is like i feel like Twitter in general right now feels like the whole world is on fire. And I feel like maybe let's temper those, you know, Mm. thoughts right now, because I feel like a a lot of it is a rush to judgment, in my opinion. Yeah. Let's see what happens, you know, next week even. Um, And it's not to say that the criticism is unfair. I think that it's fair for people to criticize and be upset or whatever. But like also at the same time, we're getting so many different like we talked about before, so many different games being rumored as being talked about for multi platform. I I go back to I feel like it's still it was an ongoing conversation that they had not finished the conversation yeah. on what games are going where. And like now we're seeing all of these games and people are just assuming that all of these games are going everywhere and seemingly random. Maybe. Too. Right, and it maybe not. So maybe let's just calm calm down <laughs> the flames a little bit, Twitter. The only part that I I, I, I I that bothers me about the whole thing, of course, the hyperbole. Of of course, that's always annoying. People pretending like everything's on fire. Xbox fanboys crying in the streets. You know, these are right. always going to be the annoying parts. Disregarding the obvious stuff, right? I hate the hand wavy. Um. Oh, you know, it's not that big a deal. And, like, this is probably one of the biggest deals right. in the last 20 years, right? We just had a big deal with Act- Activision Blizzard, right? We p- Before that, guess what the other big deal was? B- Bethesda, right? <laughs> and then yeah. after that was probably the introduction of Game Pass uh, for, for Xbox as a core uh, service and, and a, a company. So this is a big deal. And also... Yeah, I don't think it's a given that they stick with hardware. I, I think a lot of people are saying that. Like, no, why would they do that? I'm like, if they're the release of their games on everything and it makes a lot of money, what justification do they have to make a box anymore? Like, no, we just we just make the games now. 
That's kind of that, that isn't what they fully do, right? You brought up they make surfaces, they make their own kind of hardware stuff, but I don't think yeah. it's that crazy to worry about that. Oh no, I don't think that's crazy to worry about. However, I do think you know it, we also have to think about you know if you publish on Sony, uh, for instance, or PlayStation, you're giving them a cut of your game sales. Whereas if you're publishing 30%. first party on your own console, yeah, you're 100%. getting all of that. Uh, profit uh, uh, yeah and i'll be curious to see if they like get a bigger rip or something i, I, I wonder how mm. those negotiations go when you walk up it's like here we're gonna give you sea of thieves hi-fi rush what is let, let's like name some we're gonna right. give you hi-fi rush sea of thieves starfield uh the next doom game microsoft flight sim we want uh you to get 10 percent. like you know and at right. home these this isn't that's not crazy to say uh famously ftc they bullied to Microsoft to give them a lower cut. Literally, you see the emails. Bobby Kotick himself said, we don't need you. You're going to get yeah. this cut. Like, they, I think it was 8% or 6 something. I don't remember. Off of a certain amount of millions sold. And they did it. Because <laughs> so, yeah. they were launched on their system. So, you know, this isn't unheard of. I'm curious if they're like, hey, we'll let you have... Uh, like give us the first million or maybe 2 million with you getting 10% of it. And then after that you get 20, you know, maybe tiered. I'm curious how that's going to work. Cause like now you're negotiating right. with your <laughs> supposed yeah. advisor in this or adversary in this. So I don't know. I would love, we'll never know, but I would love to be a fly in the wall in that situation. Like oh. how do you negotiate to launch on their platform? One more thing, I just thought of this. Go ahead. Crazy, crazy, crazy off the wall of theory, but like, who's to say in ten or twenty years from now, games are are not completely different? And Apple is a major player in yeah. the industry, and you know maybe Sony and Microsoft team up at that point because you know you're looking at a major co corporation in Apple, and you know maybe Amazon gets there. Like, there's a million it's... different things. So it's so easy in this industry to forget things. Uh, I struggle with it it's because it's so volatile. So much happens. But let's not forget. We know that. Um, was it Jim or Phil now? I, I just said I forget things. But they said like the reason we the potentially the reason they were buying uh, Activision Blizzard was because they knew they're on the market and someone else might buy them, i.e. Tencent. I.e. Amazon, I.e. That was an avenue. Sometimes you justify buying things because someone else can't have them. And right. we know for a fact that they look at them as potential, adver at, like at any point, and Amazon can try to weasel their way in here, and Apple can try and, they know Tencent is, is I, you know, I think um in my head we have like very big happenings in the industry right now, right? I have like, you know, like the top five. It'd be Tencent, Saudi Investment Group, um the game game pass and xbox and its fluidity and all that stuff and you know you could probably get creative and name a couple more things but just keeping it there that's important that, to keep an eye on amazon has a shit ton of money they yeah. apple is incredibly liquid they have like the most money liquid liquid ever right uh yeah. so uh it, it, they could buy just to give you guys an idea they could buy sony with cash it's true Cash, cash in their bank. Now, that's not that you don't do that, that you get loans and the, you know, that's yeah. not normal. So it really is kind of like at any point we already see Apple. I know you've seen it. Death Stranding is on the uh, it's, it's going on there. We see Resident Evil 4. We see, you know, they're slowly dipping in that these iPhones are going to start playing not cutting edge, but pretty fucking close, pretty close. Yeah. So let's let's think about that, too, as we as we close out today that, you know, this is important, but uh, this could be to keep other ones out. And I don't think you're too crazy saying like, yeah. Dance with the, the uh, what's that, the, the sorry, um, the devil, you know, is much better right. than the one you don't. You, we don't know what an Apple looks like in the game. Maybe they're like, we can't let them fucking get in here. So, you know, maybe there is some other nefarious strategies. Um, and, you know, that was the main reason that that they went after some of these deals, because like we don't we can't let them have some of these people. Uh, Embracer Group being one, a famous example of that. They bought all these things to try and sell to the Saudi and that they fucked it all up clearly. And they're in complete 
utter old fiery decline. But uh, yeah, well, anything else uh, that you want to say before um, before we wrap it up? A- yeah, anything I, I said that invokes that? Right. Rest in peace, Embracer Group, a.k.a. THQ 2.0. 2.0. Fuck them, man. They fucked it all. I'm so... I hate... I I am disgusted by them. It is... So one of, like, one of the most disgusting things that's happened in recent... I was... You know, I, I was worried about Tencent. Clearly, that wasn't that concerning. Still concerning. Not, not... You know, it's clearly they didn't fuddle too much. But Embracer... <laughs> I, I I know I I don't I don't I'm not happy people are losing their jobs but like those specific people can go fuck themselves like those executives playing with people's jobs and shit because mm-hmm. cl- it's obvious now what they were doing they were buying leveraging money getting loans buying all these random people and then they were gonna sell it to Saudi to the Saudi investment group or Tencent whoever was their buyer that that got out of there and fuck them dude. On that cheery note, thank you so much for joining me for this very nice discussion. Almost perfectly two-hour discussion of the state of Xbox, everything happening in it. Uh, I'll be looking forward to what you guys say on Pocket Speak Extend this week. Um, I, You know what? I kind of forgot. Can you remind me? Where do we? Where do we? Where can we watch that? You can watch it on twitch.tv slash podcastpxn or youtube.com slash at podcastpxn, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Oh my god, that's so nice! Thank you. I, I can't believe it. <laughs> I lost my mind. I, 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 I'm so glad. Um, I'll be looking forward to that conversation. I will be tuning in as well, uh, because this is. Uh, it's not like we get to have this conversation again uh, next week. It's done because we know what happens. So, so very glad you were able to change. This originally was going to be next week, but you were able to get in now. So again, thank you so much for that. Um. Achievers, thank, thank you so much for listening. Yeah, and anytime you there's an open door. If you ever see something you want to talk about, you know it's just a walk in. It's um, it's like Cheers. <laughs> you remember Cheers? Did you ever watch that? Yeah. No, I never watched it, but I heard everyone knows your name. Everyone knows your name in Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Dan. Thank you so much for watching this, Achievers. And until next time, go Chief. <laughs>